This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so today we are going to learn uh, two new uh, tools as part of this session. One is a Git and another one is uh, GitHub. Okay, so that is the two tools we, we are going to learn. Uh, so let's get started. <clears throat> so first thing uh, which we need to understand and that is like what is burgeoning okay what is burgeoning so if you look at this uh, the software development life cycle uh, we have lots of source code which we write over the period of time and every time uh, we modify the source code and then over the period of time we want to see that who has modified that source code in the past maybe that uh, maybe yesterday or last week or maybe last month or last year or something like that who has modified the source code what was the modification done why this modification was done for the source code where is that the source code is which has been modified and when it was modified so these are the questions which you would like to know uh, when we work on the uh, source code so uh, this is something which uh, is uh, is done with the help of some of the versioning tools actually. So if you have a questions like uh, who, what, why, where, and when, then these uh, uh, you know features you get it from with the help of versioning tool. So some of the versioning tool which we had in the past, which includes uh, SCCS, RCS, CVS, SVN. Now these tools uh, we have used in the past, okay, but now today we are going to use uh, Git. And if you look at the timeline of the Git, uh, if you see that here, uh, Git is uh, somewhere, came in the market is somewhere in 2005. Okay. And since then, uh, this has been used uh, uh, by the majority of the programmers to version their source code. So now this tool, uh, the, the Git, which we are going to talk about, is developed by uh, Linus Torvalds. Okay. Anyone have idea about it? who's who's a Linus Torvald? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. He's the one who uh, owns the Linux kernel. Yes. So he's the father of uh, Linux. So he is a father of Git as well. Okay. So Linus Torvalds. Yeah. So yeah. So of course, again, this slide is also contains the history of virtual tools. Uh, just for the information, we can uh, know about it. Uh, for the work, we don't need to know in detail and stuff like that. So yes, Git is born in 2005, and this was created by Linus Torvalds, who's the father of Linux, and uh, it was a replacement uh, for BitKeeper to manage the Linux kernel source code. So yes, Linus did not develop uh, Git because of us or someone else. But they wanted to uh, manage the source code, which was Linux source code. Earlier, they were using a BitKeeper, but BitKeeper become a commercial. So they wanted to use something which is uh, open source and distributed. So the, the programmer for the Linux kernel can use across the world. So that is how that uh, Git is born. Uh, now, Git is popular. Why it is popular? Git is popular because we are learning right now. It's one of the most important reasons which we have. But is also Git is distributed version control. Now, what is a distributed version control? We'll discuss in some time. Uh, Git is open source and it's a free software. Git is uh, compatible with all operating system, including Linux, Windows, or Mac, and it is faster than other SCMs. Sometimes hundred x hundred x also. So, why it is faster than other SCMs like SM tools? Uh, so the answer is hidden in a distributed version control, which we'll discuss in some time. Okay, so if you look at the numbers, uh, the Git, Git, Git popularity, so GitHub, uh, which we'll discuss in some time, what is a GitHub? In 2009, we had a 50,000 repository and uh, almost 1 lakh user. In 2011, we had a 2 million repository and over 1 million users. And by 2020, we had a 190 million repository and over 
40 million users. So this is the kind of uh, you know popularity what we have uh, with the Git. So the question is who can use the Git? So anyone who wants to version the source code, I repeat source code, then he may use that, he may or she may use that. Uh, so uh, Git is useful for versioning the source code such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, any coding language, any coding as such which we have, like a PHP, Ruby, Ruby on Rails, all Python and stuff like that. Uh, so you can version, if you have a file which is a, uh, which is a text based, if I put it in a simple way, any files which is, you can open with a notepad, okay? Or you can open and see the text using the VI editor in Linux. That means you can use the use Git for versioning. So uh, any text-based file, it can be helpful for it. So we should not use Git uh, for storing the images, movies, music, fonts, Word file, spreadsheets, and PDF. I said we should not, but still uh, Git can store these files, but the versioning will not be possible. When I say versioning, that means if you compare the, the one, let's say you have stored uh, two PDFs. So Git will not be able to show you the difference between PDF one and PDF two over the period or over the period of time which you have uh, committed or image differences will not be able to tell. So it may store the vanity, you may store the vanity, but yeah, differences will not be there. Versioning uh, for the, in terms of file comparison will not be there. So not as useful for tracking non-text based file. Okay, so this is the something which we need to understand. So now the question is coming to us is uh, why we say uh, Git is distributed. Okay, and that we need to understand. And this is one of the most uh, important interview questions also for all of you. Like uh, uh, why we say SVN is server and client based architecture and Git is distributed. So for that, we need to understand little bit of uh, architecture. So let's get started. So here, uh, there are primarily two models which we use a lot. One is called server and client model, okay? Server and uh, client. And uh, second one is uh, distributed, okay? So how both are different? So here if I say server and client, so some of the tools which I want to name it, for example, CVS, SVN, okay, of course, and uh, TFS, uh, we have uh, uh, tools like this, okay? These are the tools which is uh, based on the server and client model, whereas Git is the tool which is based on the uh, distributed model. So why we call it uh, Git as a distributed or um, SVN and Perforce uh, as a server and client? So let's understand this. So here, uh, first thing what we do is we have a, this is a one machine. Okay, let's understand that. And right now I'm discussing the server and client model. So this is the server which we have, okay. And in this server, what we do, we install some sort of software, some software like Perforce server or SVN server or CVS server, some or TFS or some sort of software we install it, okay? And then this software you can say, uh, let's say for the sake of discussion, I'm calling SVN, okay? So SVN, which is the one which I'm having right now. Now, SVN manage the repository. So there's a, there's a repository here. This is the repo, okay, which I have created an image of it, repo. Now the question is, what is repo? So repo, whenever we say repo, the definition of repo may be having, you no know, uh, multiple, depends on the context. But here, when we say repo, uh, repo means the 
the files which we have stored at the file the one over the period of time and then db or meta what is the db and or meta so the files which we have stored over the period of time and db or database or meta information such as who has committed what was committed when it was committed all this thing the information which uh, we were discussing about uh, the versioning concept remember that so these are the things who what why he has committed uh, where exactly all this thing so that's called meta information so uh, when i say repos then it has a files the code which we we store and then meta information okay so that's a repo so now repo uh, let's uh, just for the visualizations we'll keep it in two part okay so now this is the repo here we have a files and the database plus everything you have now if you want to use this repo so other engineers also wants to use that right so they will have let's say this uh, one developer desk this is another developer desk okay so what what each developers will do this is the, his laptop and this is another developer's laptop so what these developers will have to do they'll have to install the client here and this is the client for example sbn cvs client or svn client and perforce client or tfs client okay so they will this client will connect to the server okay at certain ip address okay and uh, then he can do all the work all the work means what so for example adding a file uh, you know deleting a file if you want to delete a file you want to view the file you want to branch the or you want to merge or you want to see the logs anything if, if you want to do this connection has to be active this connection has to be active this network has to be are you understanding all of you yes yes yeah so this model yes. what we call it yeah so this this model what we call it server and then client model we call it because here we have only one server we have one server and then uh, we have you know so this is the server and this is the client now n number of client can connect with the server and they can do adding deleting viewing branch and merging of the files so here you have only one repo and all the people work with that central repo uh, which is located at the server okay and then work on it so uh, this model is primarily uh, he is very popular for cvs as well purpose and tfs but then then you will ask me uh, okay so how the git is different how this git is distributed and that is what that is what you have to understand that so in the git model what happens uh, we don't have a server i repeat in the git model we don't have a server so if anyone is saying git server then it's a mistake okay uh, you should not use this keyword which is called git server because there is no concept of git server why because git is distributed why it is how it is let's understand that so here let's say we have a four developers okay so i'll let me draw the pictures of this one laptop okay okay so this is the one developer's laptop and what he will do he will create repo remember he will create a repo now let me copy paste this here from this part he will create a repo okay and then client will be same here only client will be installing the same here only and he will work this client will work against this local see here so in this model in the left side the one which we have you have a client only installed and server is somewhere i mean the the repository is somewhere at located at the server side that means server is managing the repository but here you are managing your repo actually so your repo and your client both will be in the same machine 
So now, if you want to version your source code, you will have a repo also, and you will have a client also, git client, which you say here. See, so in this model, here in this model, right side, the one which I'm saying, everyone, let's say we have a four developers, everyone will do adding, deleting, viewing, branching, merging, seeing the logs, and everything they will do in the local repo actually. Are you understanding all of it? Yeah, can, can you repeat? Yeah, so what I'm saying uh, here, in the server and client model, we have only one server, one repo, and all the people which have a client, they have a client installed, they work against the server and uh, do the all the file version but in the git model if you want to version the source code version means you want to keep a track of the what modifications you are making and all so you have to create your own repo everyone has to work against their own repo not there is there's no pulse server there's no as such like uh, uh, rajesh one question here yeah so if everyone is making changes in their own local repo then how other will come to know what what is the like the master changes correct correct so that's a that's a wonderful question so one thing has to be clear one thing has to be clear like if you want to uh version the source code using the git then you have to do against your rep, local repo so that is clear correct huh? all of you everyone yes yeah, yeah. Okay. The question is, but the question is how do we share our code with other people that's where the repo to repo sync happen so here in this in this concept anyone can let me copy this code this image okay and let's use this here see here in this code See here, in this year, when you want to share the code with other people, let's say I want to share my code with Ravi, or I want to share with uh, my code with, uh, you know, Sunil. So what to do? So this is a this is a Rajesh repo, and this is a Sunil repo. Okay. So here, what I will do? If I want to share the code with Sunil, so what I will do? I will push my committed repo commit changes the version one to this repo so he can get sunil can get it if sunil wants to send it to me he can also push directly to my repo so here what i'm trying to say here we can talk to any repo any repo between the two repo if you want to if you want to share the version code committed code shared if you want to share the code with each other then you can do between the repo to repo this repo to repo between can be uh, done any 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 ways actually. Are you understanding? Yes. 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 Yeah. So understand that in this distributed concept, we have our own repo. We version our own source code in the local repository. There is no server. So that's the reason we call it Git is a distributed. Uh, model for for the for in terms of working okay so that is a something which we need to understand so let's move on so yes git is distributed now the question is uh, how can we get started with it so this is the we call it a git workflow i'll put it in a step by step so it'll be easy for you so let's say you want to start with git so i would call it git basic workflow i will have advanced workflow also okay workflow now in this basic workflow step number one install git client okay step number two step number two install git client step uh, step number two create git repo because remember that you are doing the versioning with your with your local repo only so everyone must have a rep right and after that step number three 
decide which files you want to version okay you can write a code and whatever it is you can do that and the uh, step number 4 okay add a files add these files to git okay git and the step number 5 commit files okay before committing and before adding this is a one time activity only you have to do okay there is only one time activity and that means you need to tell who are you so how do i how do you say it's a one time activity config your name user dot name and rajesh kumar and git config user dot email devops at the rate of rajesh kumar dot xyz okay so this is a one time actually mind it okay so what you have to do see here install the git client this is also one time this is also one time and after that create a repo this is also one time okay now this is you have to always repeat because this is something but uh, uh, you know uh, you want to version okay you can write a code you can keep writing the code forever this is also one time and add these files to git this as you want to version those files you have to add the files to git and commit the files so in a git git basic workflow these are the steps uh, you you follow so if you have understood this uh, steps i'll show you the demo all of you anyone anyone have any questions no rajesh no question yeah so first thing how do we install the git client okay how do we install the git client so first thing is guys there's a website which is called git hyphen s hyphen scm.com okay so this website i would like to show you git hyphen scm.com so if you access from the windows you will see the windows installer if you access from the mac you will see the mac installer and if you access from the linux you will see the linux installer again windows installer you can use uh, let's say windows installer uh, you can use exe uh, linux uh, basically you can use a ex um, executable also but like rpm and devin package but in linux you can use some of the commands like apt get install in ubuntu uh, git hyphen y if you are using centos or rhl then you can use yum install git hyphen y so mac and all you will you will get a dmg file so you know that how to install and no stuff like that. so you will install this now let me tell you here when you install using windows uh, exe then you will get one utility which is called git bash so then the question is what is a git bash so guys this is a special utility uh, you can use the git using command line also so i have already installed the git it was a exe just download it and then click on the exe next 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 finish so i don't think so i have to teach you for that but yeah so once you do this uh, executable installation in windows you'll get a git bash so what is which uh, which one i'm talking about so you will see that this is the git bash okay so i'm why i'm talking about this specific tool so basically you can use the command line also this is the command line here you see git is installed in the command line also you can use powershell also which uh, which we, whichever you want powershell here so git see here. so command will remain same in the command line uh, or powershell but i'm talking the git bash why git bash so this is one of the beautiful tool actually uh, which you can use so basic linux command in windows you can run okay so you can use a git bash for basic linux command in windows plus 
get plus plus any ssh operations you want to do you can use it so if you have uh, noticed my previous sessions i have been using the git bash uh, you know a lot because uh, i like this colors and all okay i like the colored combinations font style and all this stuff i like copy paste is easier here so i like instead of using the command line i am using the git bash okay then some of you will ask rajesh uh, do i have uh, do i have a, a gui tool so id is already uh, inbuilt with uh, git so for example uh, maybe if you are using a visual studio code okay so visual studio code and git integration so if you if you do it like that then you can integrate the the git inside your uh, 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 visual studio code itself so first you have to install the git anyways and after that you can install this plugins which will help you so here you have a git extension plugin for uh, if you are using anyone using visual studio code then you can do that uh now many people are maybe using eclipse also okay so eclipse also you have a uh, uh, integrations uh, and all editor itself will get it and so on now let's say some people say no i need a dedicated gui tool for it though i don't like it but uh, you can use source tree uh, i most of the time i like the command line uh, but yeah source tree is also useful for for it it is on on the free free product from the atlassian okay atlassian the same company the one which we had a jira and confluence so this is the source tree okay so you can use it from this it's a free tool uh, so if you want to gui tool you can use source tree but fundamental if you are a very powerful in terms of fundamental you can get get started so yes it's up to you which one you want i am going to teach you the command line with a git bash all of you are clear over the step number 1 what need to be done uh, rajesh i'm sorry for the interrupt this is anvesh here i have uh, one question yeah uh, yeah actually let's say for example if i want to uh, i mean create a branch so can i i mean uh, yeah, create a branch by using cmd or else like git bash should i use only git bash only or else can i create a branch with a cmd like if i want to create a branch on a github i repeat whether you are using cmd or git bash or id or gui anything and the steps will be same match in the gui you have to click on it and in the command like a cmd or git bash you have to write a command for it so cmd command or you are running the powershell command or git bash command uh, i mean command using git bash or command using cmd or command using powershell or command using the linux console all are same git command will not change okay only your medium will medium will change okay and another another thing uh, uh, rajesh so i mean like G, you said gui about source tree uh, right so we instead mm -hmm. of uh, this we can use uh, i mean uh, github desktop as well right like you know uh, while using uh, on, uh, on the visual code yes you can use the that one. so many tools are there uh, so yes. many tools are there uh, git clients just put it in google it will take you to the official website and you see these are all clients are available so so many tools are there don't get lost in the tools uh, okay. understand the git concept and the same concept no, I, 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 just, I just want to know i just want to know about the github desktop like how do we use github desktop on a visual code on the visual code github desktop is a separate software so okay. i just just said it just i said in id if you want to use you have to install the plugins actually uh, git plugins extensions yeah extension yes exactly okay so this is another desktop based application uh, which you can use use that source tree i am recommending you because this is a good tool uh, okay. based on my experience uh, compared to other tools thank you yeah? you can use you. let's say if you are uh, coming from the legacy Uh, world like SBN Tortoise, SBN. If you have used, you can use the Tortoise Git also. Many people love that because they they have worked on the Tortoise SBN, so it's a little bit easy for them to work. Depends. Okay, all of you understood this? 
thank you okay so now the step number is done so i installed in my windows already i have installed uh, git bash git is already installed so i'll just skip this step number 2 what we will do create a rep how do we create a rep so people you know what they do that people blindly go to the command line and they started creating repo so this is my git bash command line and i start creating a repo this is not a good practice why because you are creating repo where user home is this the something which you wanted to do that no i should have a repo creation at some some place let's say cd uh, c drive okay and uh, this is the c drive and here i'll create one directory uh, just for working and demo and stuff like that demo cd demo this is empty directory i have it clear the screen where i am this is the c demo and here i'll create one more directory repo1 okay and cd repo1 and i am inside the repo1 right now okay let me show you this explorer start space dot here it is so don't blindly uh, just open up a command line and start creating repo because if you create a repo then basically you will be version the source code something which uh, you don't want it. so have it planned uh, structure okay so after that getting into this now we have to create a repo how do we create a repo then so git init is a command to create a repo let me create a repo so clear the screen and here git init okay see here in a slice empty git repository see here empty git repository where dot git so focus i am i am in the repo 1 but the repository is being created in a dot git directory correct so i i, I must mention one thing let's say if you are browsing the file a uh, directory then this directory will be hidden actually it will be hidden so from many of you so how can you see this directory so you have to go to the options and then view and here you see show hidden files folder and drive you have to uncheck it by default it's a don't show at so you have to mention like okay show hidden files folder and drive in fact hide extension for known file types also you can disable it so it will be easy for you to work on it so i have show hidden files folder okay the session this directory i can see that so what is this this is the repo actually okay so this is the step number 1 i did it okay after that i want to decide which file you want to version so i have to become a programmer so let's go and let me uh, show you through visual so it will be easy for you so i want to write some program which you want to version so this is the uh, one file i am creating file 1. java and uh, just this is the file i want to version file 1. java and index.html another file this is my code okay and like that you will write more files actually so hello dot php okay hello dot php so all these files you write okay based upon your coding knowledge now what i will do i will go inside one of the file which let's open up html file and this is one of the file code file and here i i will write a code this is line this is the code line 1 and 2 3 4 four. remember four lines of code i have added see that these two are empty file though but this is the four lines of code you are so like that you whatever the files you want to version you keep writing it this you you will do on a daily basis are you understanding all of you yeah now yes, this two you information create... yeah 
if you want to create a repo on the github then uh, git uh, git init uh, that url should come right uh -huh, yeah it should it should come this one not url it's a path actually remember there's no url exactly. because i'm doing uh see client this client is git client and everything i'm doing against my local repo okay, okay. so so uh, this is that now this is the way before committing the file this is the way to tell git hey this is what you are okay remember that there is no password as such because password is needed when there is a network uh, transaction happens see this is the network uh, call happens here okay but in this model there is no network it's like your own one directory actually correct so there is no network uh, password required for it so security is not required because everything is in your lab in your laptop desktop itself so what to do so we will set the username and email address this is the way how do we set this is the account this is the command i will run enter and this is the command user email i will run enter you can go and check that also the command to check that git config hyphen hyphen list so you can check that what was the entry which you made it hyphen in the configurations of uh, git so it's a pretty long list because my i'm using my server right uh, i'm using my laptop so it has a lots of other entries also but this one you should check out okay so this is the one time activity you do that after that you have to add a files to git so for that how do you do that add now one by one i will do that okay so we'll understand this so index.html the one which i wrote four lines of code i am going to do index.html okay so this copying this file and uh, let's come out of it clear the screen add it a file you see here and now after that committing a file so how do i commit so git commit hyphen m this is my first commit region right okay and i'm this is my commit and you see here that's commit look at this here very very carefully remember the file which i am committing the versioning it has a four lines of code so they have detected one file and four insertion which is happening okay so that is happening here are you understanding all of you hello yes 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 okay so this is the I, 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 I want to confirm now when you the when you comment now when they when is it the four insertion now the four lines that it detected now is it after the comment, the comment it discovered that okay there's a four lines there or maybe if i add new things i want to version this file no? i want to version index.html i want to version today i want to commit tomorrow i will commit day after every day i modify the code i will commit and at once upon a, at once that i reach to the certain points where i want to see the history of the commit i can see that and that's the burgeoning which we are doing correct now? okay what i'm trying to say is that the insertion now is it maybe referring to the number of lines in code in that file or maybe the new lines that i've just added ha huh. so git remember the lines of code actually. yeah okay. git read the lines of insertion or deletions for the sake of it uh, why it is doing all this stuff right now the that topic i will not get into that because that we have to change the my topic altogether but git algorithm uh, okay I'll, I'll put it in this way probably it will confuse you a lot but uh, that's how it is git is not storing the file actually git always store the content of the file i repeat git never store the files get store the content of the file as a object but for time being i will not ask you to get into that because again you might get lost and confused so right now i want you to be you know user using the git on a daily on a day to day basis 
for the versioning the files and then once you feel that okay you are good in good in it then you can get inside the algorithm and the inner working and stuff like that. okay so that's stuff okay so git commit we did now that how do i see that which are the commits are there so how to see committed history how do i see so there's one command which is called git log okay so git log so here git log i have committed only once right so this is the git log okay so now first thing let's uh, validate that there's a one commit let's validate uh, and and step number 6 7 so there's one more step this last one how to see what was commit so you have to use one command which is git show okay and git show and uh, git show and then this id you have to use what is this id we need to understand it okay so git show and enter you see here okay so this is the command which you have to use that for that seeing that what was how to see what was coming so now let's understand this get an answer okay log let's go back to go to back go back to the basics see why we are versioning so over the period of time if i want to know who has committed i should know what was committed i should know why this was committed where and when correct so who so are we getting this information from this look at my screen all of you so who so the name of the person who committed is rajesh kumar here also you see uh, log commands and the show commands also here you see so who is that that the person who committed the code i got to know now next question which we should be answered what was committed what was the content which was committed so in the show output if you see these are the four lines it was inserted by rajesh kumar so i got to know fine that is also answered why this was committed so here there is a reason for it also we give the hyphen m remember hyphen m and uh, the reason why we are committing message okay so we got to know okay this why this was my first commit for the demo and all that was the reason it was committed where exactly so it's in the root location of index.html if it is some directory and all you will have you will see that So it's a root location, and when it was committed, so here the time is also mentioned. It can be uh, 2021 also if it is older or not. So exact time, all this thing. So here, if you keep continue continue doing the same flow, okay. So something like what you have to do now, uh, you have to modify the code, add the code, commit the code, modify the code, add the code, commit the code, modify the code. add the code come in the code if you want to see the history logs and show and this will be on repeat actually all the time all of you are understanding this yeah but yes 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 so now these are the commands i run just for the basic workflow so what i will do i'll just uh, i started from here and i have a doubt rajesh so when yeah. you uh when we do the step one like in it git in it mm -hmm. okay then mm -hmm. there will be a new file which will be opening dot git right it will be direct dot it's a direct dot git is your direct okay so we'll be not pushing any file into that one we'll come back and no, we'll you should not touch that file yeah you should not that you should we not should touch that there and we should uh, uh, push the other files in the uh, directory which we have created right yeah yeah so this questions i will answer in some time also okay uh, so now Rajesh, if you want to touch that file what would be the command which file for example let's say we have created one repo and if you want to touch that file and like what would be the command touch that file means i did not understand i mean if i want to uh, like you know uh, open up that file 
Philo directly. This is a direct client. Okay. This is a direct. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a direct. Okay. Fine. Now, next question. I think it will clear your confusion. The one which you have. So the next question I'm having in my mind. So what is the adding which is happening? What is the add it will do? And what is the commit will do? I'm not able to understand. Okay. So this we need to understand very well. Okay. So get comfortable with the directory structure. Very important one. This is my location of repo. This is my repo. Okay. So we need to understand the anatomy. What is the difference between add and commit? We need to know. So let's do one thing. Let's create one more, one more image. And let's call this as a whole directory. So I'm going to create one directory here. So this will represent the directory which I'm having right now is just for the explanation I'm using. This is my repo locations. Are you okay with it? Now in this directory, if I look at this here, we have a dot git. So what I will do, I will draw a picture here. Okay. And this also I defined into the dot git. Dot git. And so this dot this locations theoretically it will be this one. Are you are you agree with me, all of you? Are you Agree with me, all of you? I think that's you. What you are trying to do. Right. So now, this is my directory. In this directory, we have a two space dot git, and there is a only one more space. What do we call it? This one. This we call it workspace. Okay. And this one we call it. Repository. Clear, right? Okay. So, what is my workspace? This is my workspace. What is my repository? This is my repository. Clear, all of you? Okay, okay. So, what I'm trying to say is human. Human means you and me. You will all bitch work in the workspace. And you will modify, add files and directories and then write the code. Where you will all bitch work? You all bitch work in the workspace, this place. Okay. So now the question was. What is the difference between add and commit? So you know what? This repository is also divided into the two part. Okay, don't get confused. This is the repository is divided into two part. The this repository which I'm talking about is this one. Okay, so now you see that more, many files and directories just leave it. Don't get into that right now. Just leave it as it is. But this directory theoretically is divided into two parts. One we call it, one we call it staging. Or many people also say index. And another one we call it repository. Okay, so actually with the one which I was calling a repository. Actually, it's not repository. That repository dot git contains two things. One is indexing area, and one is a repository. So now we'll say Rajesh. Okay, fine. I understand that this is the git repo, git directory. But where is the index? Where is the repository? For time being, just ignore the fact. You should not. You don't have to locate it. 
okay i don't want to complicate too much but here it is but my question was what is the add and what is the delete so what happens you know when you add a file so let's say you said git add and file name then what has happened it has gone that that file which has gone to staging area okay this is called add this is called add let me write it a d b and i repeat when you say commit this this command then what happens this file itself get into the repository and this is the commit which you have one commit yeah and this is a commit so understand this here very simple so when you say add earlier i said add these files to git actually you should say add your files from workspace to git staging area are you understanding what and when you say git commit then from git staging to repo area are you understanding all of you yes yes i'm yes. following you yes. so add and commit so you work in the workspace add it send to staging area from commit from the staging area to repository look at this one image also for better visualizations see here so when you once you work in the working directory send the file to staging area using the git add command and then from staging area you send to the repository okay so this is it. so now you know what you keep doing it you modify the file add commit version 2 add commit version 3 so this will keep piling up so all the version will be there in the repository it will keep piling up versions okay so this flow are you understanding now right so if someone will ask you hey can you please tell me what is the difference between add and commit then you should be able to answer right <clears throat> all of you so but what but what happens in the staging area sorry if i ah. missed out Ha, the question is you should be asking why do we have a staging area then then a staging yeah. area we have for the temporary reviewing the changes which you made it in the workspace okay you can say it's like a review place of any addition or uh, deletion modification on the files which you can review in the staging area and if you are sure about it then commit remember commit will take the files from staging area not from the workspace okay okay so now the next question you will ask me rajesh okay fine i understand these are the spaces you are talking about but how do i know which file is in which area like workspace or staging or repository repository you don't need to know because if it's not in space and staging that means is gone to repository i mean sorry if it's there in the space and not in staging that's gone to the repository so how do i see that look at this directly how many files i am having three files remember three files i am having it so out of which one file already i committed remember i committed so theoretically if i see git status there is a command which we have called git status so if you want to know which files are at which are the location then git will git status command will tell you okay there's some noise coming from someone let me mute all of you yeah so if you want to know that file whether it's in workspace or staging area or repository 
this is a command to me so here you see so if you see that if i do ls i see three files but if i see git status i see two files so why one file is not showing by the git so git knows that this file has been committed that means versioning has been done and after that there is no modification happen so it's not showing it so only these two files git is trying to version it that means git is saying hey i have only these two files which has not been version from my workspace so if you see that read this message git saying untrack file means git has no idea about this file why because i never committed this file in the in the past okay so what to do so i will git add file one dot java i'm adding remember so if i add this theoretically this file should be in staging area correct so here if i show you git status see here so this file is in staging area that's the reason you say hey if you want to unstage it run this command this file is in workspace this file in staging area okay the file which was i committed already has been version so it's not showing are you understanding all of you yes sir yes yes yeah so now if i add another file also hello or something like that it's not hello it's a help here or something oh, sorry bad bad thing okay and clear the screen and now you see the status get status see these two files are in staging so if i want to send so staging means here this file physically will be there but it has gone to staging also so you can send to the repository for version okay so git commit i'm committing so if you have a files in staging then only commit will work okay committing second commit and done see here zero insertion means it was a mp5 there was a two files for change so git status you see here it says nothing to commit working tree is clean but ls is showing three file so what does it mean that means all these three files has gone to version that means version has been done to all these three files so git is stating saying that hey there's no changes has been done so after that the after the last commit so no need to worry about it. so now what we do so see here understand the flow is very simple you modify the files here add commit modify the files here add commit modify the files here add commit and this is keep doing it throughout this versioning process all of you understood this all of you Rajesh, yes. I'm sorry for the interrupt, <laughs> but yeah. you know when we git commit, so it shows like you know whatever the empty files, right? Yes. Okay. So whenever whenever we use git status, git status will tell you the files which has not been committed, uh, whether is here or here. Okay. Fine. Thank you. For example, let's say I change the file, which is uh, this one. Okay, I just add some random code here. Done. And if I see here, git status. So now git is saying, hey, I have this file, but the content which you modify the new content, I don't have it. So what to do? Again, you have to do add and then commit. Every time you have to add and commit. because if you want to store here it should be here and if you want to keep it here you have to add it so every time whether it's a new file or existing file which you have used prior you have to commit so here again add dot means everything and you see here git status now this is in staging area the changes which i made it now is in staging area 
and now commit hyphen n adding third one and commit so again you see one file change but there were two inserts maybe two lines of code and now status so git is saying hey, nothing is there which can be committed again because everything you have committed it. so this process will keep continue doing it are you understanding now yes sir rajesh thank you yeah so git log i have a three commits right now i must talk about one of the things here which is important and that is what is this okay so this is important so if you have come from the old school means if you are you coming from the old school means svn or perforce or 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 cvs then instead of this number you will have a version number something like a commit one will have a version number 1 then 2 3 500 5000 5, 5x like that it will be always incremented by one or something like that so those so these tools which i had discussed initially it's like a cvs or perforce or something like that which were based on the server and client model so they were storing the revision number sequence 1 2 3 4 5 but it is different actually so what they do each commit okay each commit whatever you do each commit you have a one file or hundreds of files okay depends no problem or and directory multiple directory uh, in one commit okay each commit they store store as a object store as a object now this object we call it checksum action okay so store as a object this call it checksum call it checksum this object okay now which algorithm which basically create object so algorithm which is used by algo sha1 algo okay so sha1 algo okay so if you if you see that commit here has happened and here has happened and let me show you i can see that okay so that data is not coming here but git is powered by sha1 algo okay so remember now call it checksum or we call it commit id sorry forget about this yeah so here each commit it can be one file or 100 files with a multiple directory store as a object call it checksum and algorithm which is being used sha1 algorithm now so each commit each object assigned with signed with 40 character unique unique number which is a hash which is this one okay this is the something and we call it what we call it this one call it commit id okay so now if you see that in the git every time git log See, this is the commit ID. This is the commit ID. This is the commit ID, and this is the commit commit ID unique actually. Okay, always it will not be duplicated. It will be always unique, and this is how you trace the whatever the commit you made it. Are you understanding all of it? Yeah. Is this commit ID specifically used uh, when we need to roll back? Ha. Huh. If for everything. you may use commit id for that so how it happens let me show you the relationship between the commit now so what happens so when you do the first commit in the git repository let me so this is the commit id we call it object o means object and this is the commit id which i showed you forty character so now next commit will have so this will also create a one object 
the next commit also will create one object the next commit will create one object now understand this when this object the parent of this object is here and this is a child of this object understand the so parent relationship and child relationship so parent of this is this but parent of this is this parent of this is this whereas this one is a child of this i hope you are understanding this so this is the relationship actually okay are you understanding can you repeat so this is a super parent okay this is a child of this parent but this is the parent of this one simple no everyone is a parent and child except the first one. yes yes first one is a only, only parent so this is the commit number 1 2 3 4 like that. understood yes yes okay now i'll ask you to remember one more thing here let me ask you one thing very simple thing let's say uh, there is a, some animal okay or maybe human also so if you if you capture the child don't don't you think the parents will automatically will come to you yes sir sure Sorry. Yes, Rajesh. Correct, no? Yeah. So if you capture the child, then parents will automatically come to you. So something similar which is happening here. Let's say you, if you are, you want to show, if you want to see this commit, then all this commit will come automatically. If you want to see this commit, all this commit will see automatically. If you want to see this commit, all these two commits will come automatically. Okay. Are you understanding this one, sir? Hello. Where it is? Yeah. Remember that parent and child relationship. If you call the child, parent will come automatically. Let me show you. Okay. So now, guys, look at my screen, all of you. Touch file one. Git. add are you okay with this command all of you uh, could you please repeat it once again rajesh no i am i'm saying to read it and do let me know if you understand this h means it will open a file git add all means it will add all the files Uh, not open a file. It will create a dummy file using yes. touch command. Let the Linux command. Correct, no? Commit. Commit means uh, it will commit file one. Yeah, not file one. This is a message. It will commit everything whatever you have been staging. Remember the concept. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay with this, right? Yes. Yes. Enter. one commit i did this just to save time two commit also i am doing it three commit also i am doing it and one more less to that just to save time four so i did four commit okay every time there was a new file file 1 2 3 4 so can we see that git log see here now you know i am li li literally feeling little bit lost because too many commits are there so what i'll do uh, so i will play with the log itself and i will say hey show me in one line only this is much easier for me so this is the file 1 this is the file 2 this is the file 3 this is the file 4 so and these are the initial commit which i made earlier so for this child this is the parent for this child this is the parent correct now all of you
So now what I want, see, I got tired committing. Add commit, add commit, add commit, add commit. Now what, what is happening one day, one fine day, my manager said, hey, Rajesh, I'm really angry with you. So I said, why you are angry with me? Then he said, like, you wrote some code at certain days, and that is creating a problem for our software. Then I got shocked. So I, I thought, let me check that either whether it's that code is added by me or someone else. And that code added or modified or deleted, it can be anything. Are you understanding the context? All of you? Yes. So what to do? So I need to reverse way. See, earlier I was adding and commenting. Why? For virgining. Now the time has come to use the virgining technology to get a benefit. So I want to know opposite way. That means whatever the version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4, all these objects which I talked about it here, I want reverse way. Okay. So right now, I want to see this code which is I committed here and I want to see in the workspace. So reverse way, not this way, add commit, but reverse way, I want to update my workspace. Please hear me out. I want to update my workspace. Remember how many workspace you have? Tell me how many workspace you have? Only one, correct no? One, yeah. Yeah, so remember that this is the only locations. This is the only locations here. This is the location which is my workspace. This is the only locations where I should add a file and commit, or if I want to refer the older file, which I committed last week or last month, I should see here only. Because I, I clearly mentioned human works only in the workspace. So what I need to do, I need to reverse the files. So look at my screen, all of you. So right now, the last commit which I made it file four. And now I want to see what was who was committed here. So what I will do, git checkout. Remember that file three. Checkout. Checkout means reverse way. I'm doing. And see here. Now you should read this message. It's stating like you are detached to the older version of the so earlier it was a master, the latest version. Now I'm in the older version. Can I see that? Do you have a file for? Do you have a file for? No. So I, I told you, right? If you get it, this one, the all the parents automatically will come here. So you have a file three, file four is not there because older commit. I checked out and then all the previous commit files also has. Are you understanding all of you? If I check out the older one, let's say, let's go for one, one more older. Let's say this one. So file one, file two, file three, file four should not be there. See, understood all of you? I'm, I'm reversing in my workspace. I'm doing the reverse way. And I'm checking that, okay, at that time, what was the state of my code? Are you understanding all of you, right? Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. But now no. I'll go to the, huh? now I'll no. go to the last commit. Now I'll go to the last commit, which was done in the repository. So git checkout master. Master will take me to the last commit, which I did in the repository. And you see that. Too. So this is the benefit of virginity. You can go back any time in the past. Uh, I wish we, we, we should have this functionality in real time also. So you can go in the past and revert the changes. Correct? Wonderful, right? So you can rewrite the history with the Git, the code history, by the way. Life history, I don't think so it's possible or maybe I don't know. So this is the uh, one. I have a doubt, Rajesh. So we yeah. told that if we are targeting on the parent, then child will also come behind it, right? Uh, right. So 
if if there's a problem with the file four okay so as your manager said that file four there's a problem uh, with some source code okay if we are mm -hmm. uh, if you are modifying or if you are deleting that whatever the file four then it does it affect the master code or the the child code child uh, files or something you got it mm -hmm. yeah i understood your question uh, but i'm thinking how to explain it okay i'll put it in this way okay uh, this is workspace you understand that right yeah rajesh okay wonderful now let's understand in a different way actually. because so here day 1 day 2 day 3 okay in the day 1 this is my c drive okay think simple always don't complicate your understanding in the day 1 c drive you have a file which is called raj dot txt and there's a ramu dot txt there's a two file okay and in this raj dot txt the content is i love india and the ramu dot txt i love uh, git okay there are two content what has happened day 2 you modify this file so you modify only raj file c drive same directory raj file and you in the raj dot txt you said i love world okay and this ramu is un, not changed in the day 3 what you did what you did you added one extra file and this is called uh, git.txt file and here you said i love devops code now this is something you should do every day correct don't you yes yes rajesh yes rajesh you modify the files every day correct now yeah definitely now git has nothing done great act he has not done anything great whatever the it was snapshot of day 1 is stored in the one object i repeat day 1 snapshot of day 2 in the another object and day 3 in another object now let's talk in simple way let's say if i go and say that i want to go to the day 2 day 2 day 2 means this and this so tell me what will be the content of raj dot txt tell me i love the world i love the world but if you say hey i will just restore only day 1 dot txt what will be the content of raj dot txt i love india and if you have a day 3 then you have a git dot txt raj dot txt ramu dot txt raj dot txt with i love world git dot txt with i love uh, demo school and ramu dot txt with i love git correct na yes the same thing same thing is happening you know every time every time you add and commit entire changes of your workspace is getting stored as a object i putting in a simple way and when you want to revert back the same method which i said no it will come along with all this snapshot so are you understanding these are the versioning of the file system act are you understanding all of you i got it yeah so nothing great about it. okay so now what i did i use some of the commands additional commands so i should store it uh, also because i want to give it to you so this is the 
sir after mm-hmm. using checkout all the files will come back to the workspace or will just to check the files only we use checkout no all revert back remember you, we have only one place to experience the files either you modify the files or either you put the old files only one place workspace okay so this one we will be getting updated if you do the checkout got it Okay. Yeah. yeah. So guys, some of the commands I must repeat it, so you should get comfortable. So either is we call it uh, in the cricket uh, rapid fire, not rapid fire. What what we call it in the cricket? Some 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 few overs we get it right, where we can play at the very fast power play. Power play. Power play. Yeah. See, I'm I'm forgetting the keyword. Yeah. So now I'll do the power play. So what power play? I'll I'll show you the demo. Please mute yourself, guys. There's some noise coming from your side. Until you are asking your questions. Okay. So now I'll do the little bit of power play. Power play means some of the commands I will run in the fastest way. For example, how do we add multiple files? how to commit folder how to rename how to delete how to move files and all this stuff these are the typical things you do that right so let's do that here so here touch file 5 file 6 i'm dumbing file creating file 6 file 7 okay So I created a dummy file. Git status: all these files is new, will be then working directly. Git add and all. I am sending to staging area and see the status. All's gone to staging area and let me clear this thing. And Git commit in one go itself. You do that. Commit add all. Uh, commit all. Now, if I do the commit all, you know what? All the files which was having the staging area will be committed. But I don't want to do that. Control C, and I want to show you this. I want to do only one one changes from the staging area, not entire changes of staging area. What should I do? Git commit hyphen m selected one. Which selected one? I want to do only file file seven. See. If I commit without specification of that file, it will commit all this thing in the staging area. But this time selected. Okay, how to add directory? So simple, mkdir src. Okay, and you see that status. So directory is not visible. Why? Because Git has no importance of directory until there is a file. Image. Empty directory is not making any sense for the Git. So what to do? Touch src ramu dot txt. Now I added some files inside that src, and see, it has detected. It's in their working directory. You have to add it and then commit it. So git add all dot and status, and now I'll commit everything. So here I'm committing few files and directly all these two files plus dir. Both. And you see that here, it's gone. Three files, zero insertion though, and so care for it. So this is uh, this is the way you commit the directory. How do we rename the files? So let me show you one files which I want to rename. There's a file called file one which I want to rename it through the Git. So Git mv file one to file one one. I just rename it using Git. You see the status. Here, you see renamed. So after that, you have to commit and rename, right? Rename. And I committed. Now that file got committed. Status done. Now how do I delete the file? So delete the file. Uh, how can I delete the files? Let me show you. I want to delete the file file two. Okay. So git rm and file two. Now I am deleting this file. 
and after that status and you see here this is file deleted i'm going to come at this delete and so do you think this got permanently deleted no it's not got deleted permanently see here the workspace is having no file to git log one line see here this is the place file got deleted this is the place file was there so if i check out this file i will go into the non deleted stage of the my workspace see nls see file to issue so in the latest commit i deleted the file so here check out mash this is how you delete the file now how you change the location for the files okay so renaming and moving is the same in in git so git mb command index.html i want to send to the src then see it. git status and you see and then commit moving a file and submit it and you see here ls is not there the index.html src is there so this is the way you work with other scenarios also and accordingly you can take it up are you able to understand all of you yeah if you want to enter the file and take the source code we should use vi right vi yeah, I mean, yeah. but if you don't like you can use explorer also you can go and use eclipse visual studio code and stuff like that whatever you do i am using that because of speed i get it using that so rajesh is there a, a session parameter to set the auto commit on the git not required no? because remember why do we need auto commits right why do we need because like you know uh, see um, considering the staff to, at, at a different levels right so there could be juniors very juniors and seniors so uh, seniors know how to manage things but juniors might not be uh, though the training is provided so is there a way for them to commit their code at regular intervals without initiating command you forgot that everyone is committing against their own local repo in your laptop so should i interfere in your laptop uh, uh, correct it could it, it could be anything right say yeah see you, i i wrote uh, 10 pages of code anything could happen so you it this is your correct. responsibility you want to see you can version that and if you want to share with the whole world that's a different topic but you have to version it Uh, i am not going to tell you what time you will commit what time you should not commit uh, i am not going to interfere in your workspace because that's a developer workspace they want the freedom uh, let's say let's say you, you you say you 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 say in your laptop i want to commit at certain time no worry just run this command the commit command uh, and uh, uh, write, write a cron tab or maybe windows services and this command will run every time So it's up to your it's individual call. Getting more points. Okay, yeah. Writing a cron is a different thing altogether. But you know, uh, I was just asking, like you know, is there a, a way to set a session commit kind of thing? But yeah, that's fine. Yeah. This is a dev tool actually. Okay, so we should not uh, have those kind of uh, scenarios in mind because it will complicate the our understanding. How how to switch okay. the branch like from master to like SIT like some other branch like feature? No branching I have not discussed so far. That's a pending topic. So I need to okay, teach. Okay. Okay, guys. So now what we learn? If you look at the architecture, I taught you how to work in the local repository. Okay. So see that Ramu, Shyam, and all this is the Peter, Joseph. every when they were share they are doing the versioning of their source code and whatever the renaming deleting and all this thing. but now the time has come for sharing our code with others 
and how do we do that that we need to understand so here the basic workflow which i was talk i'm sorry <clears throat> the basic workflow which i was teaching you are initially now we'll have to change that and we'll get into the change the topic and advanced workflow using advanced remote work that means how do we share the code with each other because i can't work alone right we'll have to work as a team correct correct so that's the next topic so anyone have any confusion so far okay so what we will do we'll have a break for 15 minutes and once we come back from the break i'll teach you how to work with a remote and also branching merging and some of the other practices also okay see you guys